I want to leave you with a book that I read a little while ago, and I think I've shared it with some of the ELP folks, so um, I would ask you to grant me patience in this story. Tony Dungy is really known by most people as a football coach, and he won a Super Bowl with Tampa Bay. That's not why I know Tony Dungy or why I like Tony Dungy. Tony Dungy wrote a book that had massive impact on me and massive impact on my family, and the book was called Uncommon. I have a 16-year-old son. His name is Jacob. I love Jacob with all my heart and soul, just like Sarah and Emily, my older daughters. Jacob's the last one, so he's getting the full 12 gauge of the dad. <laughs> now, I think it's really, really hard to be my son. And I promise you, I never wanted it to be hard. My father, God rest his soul, Norman Kaplan, he never made it hard for me to be his son, <laughs> never. So I've been really, really trying over the last couple of years to try to find some language that I, Jacob and I could speak and use together. And this book created some language for me, and it was around being uncommon. And what I noticed was is that it was universal because a 16-year-old boy at the time when I first started talking to him about it, he was probably 13, it began to unlock some incredible passion between the two of us. And what I noticed was I told him a story, and I'm just going to share this story with you, and then you're going to go have some lunch, and I'm out of your hair. I'll quit screaming at you. I'm not going to call on anybody else. I remember uh, 30 years ago, God, I was going to say 20, 30 years ago, I remember I played football for a team called Boise State. I used to say a team called, but I don't, most of you know who Boise State is, or many of you know who Boise State is. I used to have to say a team called. So I played for them in 1981, and then I transferred. They went on probation. Promise you, 1,800 people in here. I didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> so I transferred back closer to home. I'm from Michigan. Go blue. Thank you. Oh, I love that. 1,800 people. You got to have some Michigan fans in here. I'm coming back here on September 2nd, by the way. When Michigan, any Alabama fans in here? We're coming. No, we're coming. We're coming. Yeah. September 2nd, I think it is. I'm coming here to Dallas Cowboy Stadium or whatever they call it. What do they call it? Cowboy Stadium. I'm coming. So I was telling Jacob about I transferred to a school called Bowling Green. I was all excited. There were two coaches there that I was really, really excited about. One was called Haycock, and the other one was called Solomon. Keith knows Haycock. He wound up at that school in Ohio for 20 years. But I got a letter right before I'm getting ready to go. And the letter said, Dear John, basically, I'm your new coach. Don't know what anybody else said to you, but you report with the freshmen. I had already played a year of major college football with the defending Division I AA national champions, and I was just told that I had to report with the freshmen, and the two people that recruited me were gone. I'd love to tell you how I responded with <laughs> pride, and I'm going to show them what I got. You know what I started to do? Eat bonbons and watch daytime TV. I was a 215-pound linebacker that became a 240-pound linebacker really quick, more like a defensive end. One of my friends at the time played for a rival college. His name was Vince. Vince called me and he said, hey, John, I haven't seen you at the gym. Where are you? And I said, I'm around. And he goes, I'm coming to get you. And I'm, just before I could say Vince, Vince is six foot five, 290 pounds. I hope he's still that or less than that. I don't know. Some of my friends got really big. But when Vince, you know, you know what I'm talking about. When Vince would come, when Vince would come to the door, and if he says you're going to go to the gym, you're going to the gym. Just Vince had that way about him. So I'm like, okay, I get in the car, and I'm like, I, I can do some curls. You know what I mean? I'm not motivated at all. I'm feeling sorry for myself. The world's against me a little bit. We get in the car, and we drive 
to the gym, which I think we're going to the gym. There's the gym. Vince drives right past the gym. I'm like, Vince, the gym. He goes, we're not going to the gym. I said, Vince, where are we going? He said, we're going to run. <laughs> I said, no, we're not. <laughs> now, when Vince says you're going to run, you're going to run. Or at least we're going to go to a place that has running. <laughs> I haven't made my decision whether I'm running yet. So Vince gets out of the car and he says, John, let's go. This is a guy who's a competitor of mine. We weren't really even that close of friends. But I love him to this day for what he did for me and the story and the conviction that he gave me. So I get out of Michigan people, Oakland University. You know Oakland University? You know that little, uh, that little track that they have? So we go running, walking towards the track, and I'm like, okay, here's the track. I can go stretch out a little bit, act like I'm running. <laughs> Vince walks right by the track. I said, Vince, where are we going? He said, we're going to run. And if you know Oakland University, you keep walking a little bit, and back in the wooded area, there's steps that go like this, straight up. I'm not running that. Vince takes off and he runs, 295 pounds, and he runs, and he goes, and he goes up, and he starts to get small. That's how high it is. And then he comes down, and as he comes down, he leans his face into me, and he says, hey, who's doing this? And I'm kind of, not me. He goes back up, boom, 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 boom. Now, thumper's going, he's sweating, he comes back down, and he goes, Who's doing this? What's he talking about? Who's doing this? What's he talking about? He starts to go up a third time. Now I'm feeling a little bit embarrassed. Here's a 295-pound man. I'm probably 240 pounds or whatever. 240 pounds. And I'm supposed to be 215. So I start running. I'm not, if I'm going to be out here, I'm going to start to run. And as I start to go up, I can tell thumper's really going boom, 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 boom. And he leans in his big head and he says, who's doing this? And I'm kind of like, get out of my face, dude. What is wrong with you? I get up to the top and Thumper's really going, boom, 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 boom. And it came to me. What was he saying to me? Who's doing this? And as he came down, I started to come down. Vince started to come up. And I knew in that moment, when he leaned in and he said, who, and he didn't even get it out of his mouth, what do you think my response was? No one. No one. And in that moment, 30 years ago, I remembered what it was like to be uncommon. And I loved it. This language... 30 years later with my 16-year-old son or 13 years old when we started, when things get difficult, when I'm trying to commit him to repeatable process that I know will work beyond a shadow of a doubt, and I know it's hard because you know what I tell Jacob is, Jacob, the world does not want you to be uncommon. Your industry, Tech Systems, does not want you to be uncommon. You get that, right? They don't want you to be uncommon. But the survey results right now are saying what? Are we uncommon? They're saying we're a little common. But I don't believe that for a minute. That's what the survey is saying. You're going to go to some breakouts, and you're going to work on some fundamentals. For my older people, not older people, but my people that have been doing this for a little longer and have had some success, embrace your culture, look to the left of you or look to the right of you, and help somebody else be successful. That's your culture. I'm not trying not to lecture you, forgive me, but that's your culture. I've been here 10 years, I know that much. For those of you that are struggling and, and uh, trying to find your way, you understand that your company is committed to bring you here. Most of this meeting is going to be breakouts for you to learn. These exercises were built for you, by you. And I want you to just think about during a tough moment in the next few hours when you're going to go to these breakouts. And for some of you that are saying, you know, why are we doing this? Why? I want you to remember. Somebody, please, in the room, look to somebody else and say, Maddie, who's doing this? And I want you to find joy and pride in your answer.
when you say, no one, no one. So sometimes when it gets a little difficult, Jakey is a really, really good athlete. He struggles a little bit in school. I, I hope I'd, I'm not embarrassing him if he ever sees this tape. He's a good boy. And he works hard, and I come upstairs, and it's like 10 o'clock at night. He's still doing his homework. Takes him a little bit longer to do his homework than the other kids. And as I come around the corner, I lean into his room, and it's a, it's a bond that we have together now. And I lean in, and I say, Jacob, who's doing this? And he looks at me. Years ago, he would have rolled his eyes. You got teenage kids? He would have rolled his eyes. He looks at me, it centers him. He looks at me and he says, with pride, no one. So, folks, I can't tell you how blessed I am to, to allow you guys to even, you even listen to me. I'm, I'm, I thank you for that. But for allowing me to come and speak to you, I feel like family, but I'm one of those crazy uncles or aunts that comes and <laughs> I, I sit with you a little bit and then I go and then you talk about what was that nut job. So, but... I wish you, I wish you to be uncommon. I wish you to find joy and pride in the feeling of repeating no one when somebody asks you what you're doing that's obviously different than everybody else. You got some work to do, would you agree? The rest of the day, I believe they built it out for you to do just that, to close the gap on the work. On behalf of my family, you're our first client. Force Management's first client, 2003. On behalf of my family, on behalf of Force Management and everybody that, the leadership team that asked me to come, I just want to say to you, may God continue to bless you and your families, and may he continue to bless Tech Systems. Thank you very much. Yes.